is in crisis. And people are looking for hope and answers. <laughs> Thai PBS World is there with you with the best minds of the day. Join us on Thai PBS World tonight, every weekdays at 7 p.m. Thai PBS World, we bring Thailand to the world. Swadika and very good evening and welcome to Thai PBS World tonight. I'm Nad Bunag. And I'm Tep Chai Yong. Today is another day that uh, Thai people have become as one. And today is October 13th, which marks four years since the passing of late King Pumipon the Great, who is much revered by the Thai people. As for today, many Thais across the country wore yellow to honor the great king. And throughout the day, there were also special activities to commemorate the occasion. Notably, at Sirirat Hospital, vigils were held in remembrance of the late king. And elsewhere, religious ceremonies were also held to mark the occasion. Thai People's World joins the Thai people in remembering the great king and his contribution to the country. And all eyes will be on the rally planned for tomorrow at the Rathamun Avenue. And protest organizers believe that there will be a record turnout for the rally, which is scheduled to take off at 2 p.m. and is planned to go overnight and may continue for the next several days. It will be a follow-up to a major rally last month at Sanam Luang, which saw tens of thousands of participants. Protest leaders acting in the name of the so-called Kana Rasadon or the People's Party have threatened to carry on the rally until their demands are met. One of the leaders, Anon Ampa, has vowed to bring the protesters to march to the government house to pressure Prime Minister Bayutano Cha to resign. General Natapon Nak Panit, the Secretary General of the National Security Council, said on Monday he had received a report that people from 40 to 50 provinces were being mobilized to attend the rally tomorrow. At a press conference held at Sanam Luang last week, the protest leaders declared that their first and foremost demand is for Prime Minister Prayut chan cha and his clique to resign. They also want to see an extraordinary parliament session to endorse a new constitution to be proposed by the people. Anon explained that the protesters would accept only a constitution to be drafted by the so-called People's Constitution Assembly, which represents people from all walks of life. The protesters will also be repeating their demand for a reform of the monarchy. They insist that they are not calling for an end to the monarchy, but what but want to see its role strictly placed under the constitution. The protesters are now also calling themselves Kanak Rasadon, or the People's Party, which represented a group of military and civilian officials who staged a bloodless coup against King Rama VII and transformed the country from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy on June 24, 1932. They claim that what they're doing is to continue the spirit of Kanak Rasadon. The protest organizers claim that the turnout this Wednesday will be as big or even bigger than the one seen on September the 19th and 20th, when tens of thousands of people turned out to join what was billed as the biggest anti-government rally at Sanam Luang. But the claim was quickly dismissed by political analysts and observers who believed that the protester hostile message toward the monarchy is driving away many potential supporters. Equally significant is that the protesters can no longer count on open support from Pur Thai Party. The country's largest opposition parties is undergoing a major internal change being orchestrated by Khun Jing Pochaman Damapong, former wife of ex-Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawat. Khun Jing Pochaman reportedly wants the party to distance itself from the ongoing protests and to focus on its legislative role. Per Thai is known to have supplied the recent rally at Sanam Luang with thousands of its racial supporters. 
Despite repeated denials by Pertai's leadership, it's an open secret that through Kun Ying Kutaman, former Prime Minister Thaksin still calls the shots in the party's affairs. And Thaksin also continues to count the Red Shirt movement as his power base. Kun Ying Kutaman's recent audience with His Majesty the King to donate a mobile medical unit was seen as a veal message that the Shinawa family no longer wants to be seen as being associated with political groups and activists hostile to the monarchy. But some political analysts see the new political posturing as just a tactical move to save the Shinawat family, which still runs a major business empire in Thailand from any possible political repercussions. But what is most likely is that the organizers of the rally tomorrow cannot expect to see an overwhelming percent of red shirt participants as they did at the Nam Luang rally last month. But the protesters still can count on one of its staunchest supporters, Kun Thanathorn Jung Rung Rung Kit, who now leads the Gao Na or Progressive Group, which is a reincarnation of his now defunct Future Forward Party. And Thanathorn has made it clear in recent interviews that he has no second thought about throwing his lot with the protesters. The panel discussion last week. A defiant Thanaton declared that he would attend the rally at the Democracy Monument, but would not take to the stage. Describing the ongoing anti-government protests as a new phenomenon, Thanaton called on Thai people to show up at the rally. He also declared his support for the protesters' call for a reform of the monarchy. He insisted that getting rid of Prime Minister Bayut Chan Ocha without tackling the root cause of Thailand's political ills would not bring about any meaningful changes. Bayut is not the real boss, he said. He did not elaborate, but stressed the need for a reform of the monarchy. The day chosen for the anti-government rally, which is October 14th and is also tomorrow, carries a strong political symbolism. And there is no doubt that the protest organizers want the rally to coincide with the historical date to reinforce their drive for political changes. October 14th marks the 47th anniversary of Thailand's first popular uprising that led to the ouster of the authoritarian government of Prime Minister Thanom Kit Kachon. It also brought in a new dawn of democracy and along with it, years of political turbulence. Thailand then was under a dictatorial rule presided over by military strongmen Field Marshal Thanom and his clique that came to be known as the Three Tyrants, and which also included his son, Norong Kitikajon. Thanom had staged a coup against his own government earlier in 1971 in order to attain absolute power. But his reign was marked by widespread corruption and nepotism that gave rise to widening public discontent. As student activists began agitating against the Tanov government, a seemingly unrelated incident helped turn the tide against the ruling clique. An army helicopter crashed in a national wildlife sanctuary. The government's claim that the helicopter was on a secret mission was quickly quashed by the discovery of wildlife carcasses on board. It was later established that the helicopter was being used by a hunting party that had nothing to do with any official mission. The incident further fueled the already simmering public anger against the Tanom regime. The anti tanom government protests escalated in October 1973 with student activists demanding a new constitution. The protests quickly gained popular support. It was estimated that at its peak, the number of people taking part in the protests swelled up to hundreds of thousands, something unprecedented at the time. The Tanom government responded with brute force. Protesters, mostly students and young people, were mowed down as they confronted the heavily armed security forces on October 14th on Ratchadamnon Avenue. 
Hundreds of fright-stricken student protesters being hunted down by authorities sought refuge inside the Jitlada Palace, where His Majesty King Pumipon and members of the royal family came out to comfort them. The same night, His Majesty King Pumipon called for calm in a television address and described October 14th as a day of great tragedy. His appearance immediately brought an end to the violence on the streets. The next day, Prime Minister Thanom, his son Norong, and Deputy Prime Minister Prapat Jarusatian resigned and fled the country. His Majesty King Pumipon appointed Privy Councillor Sanya Thamasak as the new Prime Minister. According to official accounts, as many as 77 people died and 857 were injured in the bloody uprising. All casualties were civilians. The uprising ushered in a new era of democracy, but it also plunged Thailand into one of its most turbulent political periods that culminated in a brutal suppression of the student movement and a military coup d'etat three years later. Among the protest leaders, few have been as outspoken about the monarchy as Anod Ampa. And no doubt, tomorrow, the young human rights lawyer will take center stage to drive home once again his demand for a sweeping reform of the monarchy. Anon <laughs> made it clear during a press conference at Sanam Luong last week that reforming the monarchy will be on top of the agenda of the rally. And he was in Nakhon Rajasima on Sunday to drum up support for the rally with the same message. Of all the protest leaders, Anon has been most consistent with his demand toward one of the country's most revered institutions, which he sees as outdated and out of sync with the present political and social conditions. Anon first gained attention when he dressed as young wizard Harry Potter while taking the stage at a rally at the Democracy Monument in early August to deliver an, an almost unprecedented speech on the role of the monarchy. The 35-year-old activist called for the power of the monarchy to be curbed, stressing that he was seeking a reform of the constitutional monarchy, not its abolition. Four days later, he was arrested on charges of sedition and breaching emergency law at a different rally held earlier in July. He was free on bail on a condition that he would not repeat the same offenses. But Anon showed no signs that he was willing to abide by the condition as he continued to speak out on the sensitive issue. Anon Nampa was born to a family of rice farmers in Thung Khao Long district in the northeastern province of Khon Ken. He has a law degree from Ram Kampang University as well. He began working on human rights issues in 2006, the year that Thaksin Shinawat's government was overthrown in a military coup. Two years later, Anon began his career as a human rights lawyer before founding a legal practice to defend political prisoners and least majesty suspects in light of the street protests by the Red Shirt Movement in 2010. Anon also aided Thai lawyers for human rights in several least majesty and human rights related cases following the military coup of May 22, 2014. The lawyer stepped up his political activism after the 2014 coup, co-founding the so-called Resistance Citizens Group in 2015 and joining a campaign for democratic elections. So far, he has been charged in more than a dozen cases for his activism. Despite his fierce and serious manner on rally stages, the pro-democracy activist is known for his humor. He starred in two protest music videos. One was to mock the then Prime Minister and coup leader Prayut Chan Ocha, and the other to protest the 2017 junta-sponsored draft of the constitution. And Anon Nampa has been consistent with his message that any political changes will be meaningless if there is no reform of the monarchy. And you can be sure that he will highlight this very issue when he is on the stage tomorrow.
definitely. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS World Tonight. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ